Good morning, everybody. Let me go ahead and get started. Uh, this is Mixed Reality 101, an introduction to Mixed Reality. Normally, I do this deck, and uh, we have it all put together. It takes me about an hour. I have 20 minutes, so I kind of reduced it a little bit. So we're going to cover a few points here. Uh, first is going to be, why me? Why am I the one talking to you? Then why you? Why am I interested in talking to you? Why now? So why, na why is now an important time for you to get started with mixed reality? And then finally, how do you get started? So why me? Uh, my name is Jesse McCulloch. I'm a program manager on the Mixed Reality Developer Ecosystem team. Uh, that means I get to talk to developers and make sure that I have a good path of communication to communicate Microsoft's message to developers. But also developers have a really good path of communication back to Microsoft so we can get feedback and start building your feedback into the product. This is my third build, uh, but my first is a Microsoft employee. My first one was uh, two, two builds ago. Um, and I came here just as an attendee and had a great experience um, and got introduced to the Mixed Reality team. I got really involved with Mixed Reality a couple years before that and decided to make a job of it. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, and then last year we did a thing called MR Jam, a build where I work with the Microsoft team and we put kind of a sub-conference on um, that was all around Mixed Reality here at Build. Uh, and now I'm here as actually as an employee. So my history working backwards. Uh, I started at Microsoft about seven months ago. Previous to that, I was a freelance mixed reality developer, head of community for Va Practical VR. Uh, this is me with Alex Kidman, who invented the HoloLens and uh, was one of the primary inventors for Kinect. Uh, and this was in San Francisco when they opened the build reactor or the mixed reality reactor down there. Previous to that, I was a technical consultant with Huron Consulting Group. Uh, working on server-side JavaScript framework that was a custom framework that was about 20 years old before server-side JavaScript was really a thing. Before that, I was in tech support uh, for a company called IHS. And before that, I was a mountain rescue EMT. So some of the things you won't notice that are on there. Nothing about college. No triple gay game studios. No 3D artist training. This is technology that is accessible to everybody, which brings us to my next point of why you. I specifically want you guys to get involved with Mixed Reality because we have tools for everybody, no matter what technology stack you're working on and no matter what your interests are. So right now, or right now our stack, uh, at the very bottom, we've got devices. So we've got things like the Azure Connect DK. We've got our Mixed Reality headsets, uh, VR headsets, the new HoloLens 2. But also things like drones and phones, all of these devices have rich sensors on them and are part of this Azure Cloud, uh, Mixed Reality Cloud and Edge uh, story. On top of those devices, we have a rich set of Mixed Reality services through Azure, um, Azure Digital Twins, Azure Spatial Anchors, and our Azure Remote Rendering. On top of that, we have the more generalized cognitive services. I'm sure you guys have seen some of these, the speech and vision services that let you do facial recognition or speech language and language recognition and, and whatnot. And then built on top of all that, we've got a really rich partner ecosystem and also uh, a Dynamics 365 offering. So no matter what you guys are doing uh, for your business, we've got a space for you and we've got tools for you. Uh, specifically looking at our, our Azure services, um, things like our mixed reality uh, or Azure Spatial Anchors let you place digital content in the real world and have it persist cross-platform. So it works with HoloLens, HoloLens 2, but also with phones and tablets like ARKit and ARCore. Um, so if you've got a business use where you need digital content to live in a specific place in the world, and we realize that not everybody needs a $3,000 HoloLens on their head to get their job done, we can do it with a phone or a tablet. We have tools for that. Same with the uh, cognitive services. These are, these are valid across all devices, whether it's a phone or a PC or a headset of any sort. We also let you build with the tools that you choose and what you guys are already using. If you guys are C++ uh, developers, our OpenXR and our DirectX integrations will let you build for mixed reality. If you are a uh, AR core and AR kit, 
uh, developer. We've got services that work with your, uh, your mixed reality there. If you are on Linux, we support you there. Uh, if you're Visual Studio or Unity or Unreal, basically no matter what tool set you guys are already building on, we've got solutions for you and ways for you to build for mixed reality. So uh, the sooner we can get you on to this set, the better. So why now? We really view mixed reality as the third computing platform. The first was personal computers. Um, back in the mid-70s, Altair uh, hired a couple of guys to build and port their uh, MS basic system over. Uh, those couple of guys later turned around and built Microsoft from that. That was our, kind of the first wave of personal computing. Uh, we saw them move from businesses, uh, where most people primarily interacted with PCs, and then into the homes. Kind of the second wave of computing is the one that we're mostly in right now. Smartphones were huge to, uh, to make you computing ubiquitous across the world. Everybody has a smartphone and computer in their pocket, and it made the tech super accessible. And we see mixed reality as being this third wave of computing, um, where we're using these devices that have rich sensor sets to talk to the, to the cloud and services up there that can understand the world around them and then take that understanding and feed it back out to those devices to enrich experiences. We're looking at in the next six years, uh, about $144 billion in market capacity that we see. Um, this is based on a study that Microsoft did with an independent research company. Um, right now, we're very much in the enterprise tasks and processes space. Uh, this is where we get a lot of our signal right now, but we definitely are starting to see social entertainment and productivity and collaboration. Um, if you guys saw the spatial demo on stage yesterday or over at their booth, they're fitting right nicely into this productivity and collaboration space. So there's lots of money still to be made in this space. We have a whole bunch of partners. To us, a whole bunch of partners, I should say. It's about 130 that are in our Mixed Reality Partner Program. But when you look at that across other Mixed Rail or other uh, Microsoft uh, platforms, 130 partners is next to nothing. So there is a lot of space for you guys to come in and build a business in this Mixed Reality world. So how do you get started? I'm going to leave you guys with one short, quick link, aka.ms slash mr. From there, you can go in and register interest for our developer program. Um, this will let us know more about you and your profile uh, and give us permission to contact you when we have events coming up. We just had an event last week, uh, MR Dev Days. We had 400 developers from around the world come out uh, to our Microsoft campus and spend two days immersed with our engineers. Uh, it was a really great time. Um, they got hands-on time with HoloLens and Azure Connect DK, but those are the kind of things that we're going to let you know about through our dev program. Um, also, when device availability comes out, HoloLens 2 and Azure Connect DK, we announced at Mobile World Congress this year. Um, and so as those devices start shipping, it'll be through those channels that we let you guys know. Uh, from that link, we can also get you, we also send you out to where you can actually build for these different services. So Azure Spatial Anchors is in pri uh, public preview right now. You can use it today, publish apps with it, and it's fantastic. Um, we've also got a lot of um, tutorials and, and quick starts for these. Uh, Azure Remote Rendering uh, lets you render super high quality holograms uh, to phones and HoloLens. Um, that one's in private preview, but you can uh, sign up for more interest there. And then Azure Digital Twins lets you marry your, your data from these machines and IoT sensors that you have in your companies um, to those machines and be able to view them through mixed reality, and that's also available there. And then it also points you to our documentation. We have a ton of documentation and samples. It's open source. I'm in control of that repository. I make updates to it almost daily. Um, and so. We'd love to get you guys in and, and working on this and working with us to build the platform and, and you know, elevate the entire thing. So that, I know I went way faster than I was expecting to. I usually do that. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer questions now. Nobody has questions about mixed reality? 
Xamarin support, yes. So uh, Xamarin has a mixed reality uh, engine called uh, Eurosharp that they have. So you can actually use Xamarin and deploy out to the HoloLens and HoloLens 2 with it. Um, right? AR? Yeah, so the HoloLens. I don't know if it works with AR Kit, AR Core. I'm not sure. Um, I will I will get your information and get back to you on that. Yeah. ML. Machine learning? Um, great question. So the question is, is, uh, is our machine learning model supported on HoloLens? Um, yes. Uh, last year we released uh, that you could run Onyx models directly on HoloLens. Um, I'm not sure on HoloLens 2. I know we've got uh, an AI chip on there, but I'm not sure how exposed that is, so I will get back to you on that. And we also have an FAQ on our documentation, so I'll make sure that these questions end up on the FAQ so that everybody has the answers to them as well. Any other questions? Digital twins, yes. So digital twins is a way to recreate your physical environment and overlay your data from physical machines uh, into that uh, environment and then be able to view it through a, uh, either a phone or a tablet or an AR headset. So if you're, say, you're in a manufacturing facility and you've got a bunch of machines that are all instrumented with uh, IoT sensors, um, what Digital Twins lets you do is go through and lay out the data from those sensors on top of the machines in a nice layout um, and persist them there so that, you know, as a supervisor, you might be able to come by with your tablet and just look at it and see all this data from the IoT sensors um, directly in context of the, of the machine that you're looking at. Why is it called twins? So basically, you're recreating your physical environment uh, in a digital way um, and marrying them together. So it's you're almost like creating a digital replication of your uh, environment. Yep. Any other questions? to be the third computing platform, I see the cost of entry of the device is too high. What's your take on how are we going to, how do you think we're going to evolve into making these things more affordable? So the question was, uh, for this to be the third wave of computing, the cost seems really high and how do we work through that and, and make it more affordable and more available to developers and, and enterprises? Um, yes, absolutely true. Um, I would say that we've had this problem in every wave of these computing, though. The original PCs were not $400 like you can get them at Best Buy today. They were multi-thousands of dollars. So as this technology evolves and, and um, the process of manufacturing them gets cheaper and also you get scales of economy, um, the prices will come down. Uh, we did just announce our developer SKU um, for HoloLens 2 last week, um, which actually has a an option for a payment plan um, type so that the barrier of entry is a lot lower. Instead of having with the original HoloLens, it was $3,000 up front. Um, I know because I had bought one. Um, you know, having a payment plan option lowers that barrier of entry and lets people not have to front that money up front. Any other questions? So, not HoloLens like phones and tablets and whatnot, or the VR headsets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the question is, where where do other non HoloLens devices fit into the whole ecosystem? Um, such things like VR headsets, tablets, and whatnot. Um, really, it comes down to the right tool for the right job. Um, you can have extremely immersive things happen in a VR headset that you cannot do with an AR headset, and it doesn't make sense to do in an AR headset. Sometimes you want to be deeply immersed in that environment. Um, 
but if you are wanting to interact with your physical world where you've got uh, items that are either placed on a surface or are interacting with a real world object, um, then AR makes more sense. And, and then with AR, again, it's the right tool for the job. Um, a frontline manufacturing worker who may need both hands to work, it absolutely makes sense to have them in a headset. A supervisor who's coming by and looking at data, it may make more sense to have them have a tablet, which is a much cheaper option for them to view that same data. Um, so this is why it's important for us to have this cross-platform tool set um, and allow you guys to decide what the best tool for the job is, no matter what that job is. Anything else? Field of view. It's bigger. Uh, so HoloLens 1, we put it out there, got a lot of feedback. What, some of that feedback was the field of view is too small. Um, depending on who you talk to, yes and no. Uh, but re it was universal feedback we got. Um, and so one of the things that we did with HoloLens 2 is increase that field of view. It's now 52 degrees diagonally. It doubles the actual area. Um, and it's great. And I suggest that if you want to see it for yourself, we are doing HoloLens 2 demos in the back of Hall DEF. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff with HoloLens 2 that we made improvements on was based on direct feedback from HoloLens 1. We had people saying that when you're in a demo space, the voice commands don't work. So we put beamforming microphones on the bottom of the headset so that we get better sound. Uh, the volume also, you couldn't hear when we were, had audio experiences, so we've upped the volume. Field of view is bigger. Um, so all the feedback we get from the ge previous generation of devices, we feed into the design of the new generation, and, and uh, hopefully we continue to do that and keep making better and better devices. Anybody else? Thank you guys for your time. <laughs>